persuade. They try to like make an argument. Oh, it's in the best interest of you as a politician of your constituents, or it's you know it, it ties into your ideology or your agenda, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. They try to use that. Mm. Um, they also try to you know do like you know of course horse trading. Oh, we have this other um, senator who has agreed to this particular thing. If you vote, if you agree to vote on this policy. He will agree to it. So there's that as well. Mm. Then there's also in America, now we so think specifically in America, mm -hmm. there's also the issue of campaign fundraising. Mm. So in America, um, interesting statistic, the average American federal lawmaker, so congressman mm -hmm. or um, senator, mm -hmm. spends one third of her working time trying to raise funds for her next election. Mm. That it is so in a particular day of eight hours of work, mm -hmm. she spends more than two, two and a half hours mm -hmm. trying to raise funds mm. because ex elections are so expensive. Yeah. And you uh, know, Nigerians have a you know, we, we're always talking about Nigeria election. Oh, they, they, it's too expensive, they spend so much money. Mm -hmm. And I'm always telling people, well, elections are expensive all over the world, all over the world. Um, the record, um, um, private lobby groups mm -hmm. in um, in America in the 2016 presidential election right. raised a total of two billion dollars. Mm. That's lobby groups, not what the candidates raised, not what PACs raised, mm. but the lobby groups just alone oh. raised two billion dollars for both sides of the campaign. Wow! You know, so if you think about that, that's like uh, that's almost <laughs> that's almost a trillion. We're talking about that. yeah, but back to <laughs> back to the point you were making. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, now in that situation. Um, the, the lawmakers or the you know the politicians mm -hmm. need campaign funds raised. Mm -hmm. And the lobbyists, because they are in touch with all these various interest groups, right. they're in touch with the Tesla and the Uber and the electric lobby, mm -hmm. they're in touch with the gun lobby and the anti-gun lobby and the tobacco lobby, mm -hmm. they can say to the con um, to the to the elected official, look, um we can set up a fundraising party for you or a fundraising gala or fundraising series of events. And it's not us giving you the money, it's mm -hmm the public people who believe in these very interest groups will donate the money and we will keep the money together for you right. donate it for your campaign if you support this policy now um i should point out that that works in america because campaign rules are very strict hmm. so when you donate money to a person's campaign the person does not put the money in his pocket he can't put the money in his pocket hmm. that money is declared it's out there in the public the fec electoral commission can look at the money mm -hmm. and they can make sure the money is only going to printing posters mm -hmm. the money is only going to campaign ads the it, the money does not enter the politician's pocket mm -hmm. so the politicians are like oh you want to raise money for me to campaign mm -hmm. and of course that's perfectly legal in america mm -hmm. and it is perfectly legal for a, for a, a politician to say if you are raising money for me mm -hmm. and the people you're raising the money from are saying these are the things we want you to deliver for us, mm -hmm. legal things, legal laws, pass this law, repeal this law. Yes, I will do those things. Mm. So that's how the inner lobbying works. Mm. That inside lobbying, I mean to say. Mm -hmm. Then outside lobbying is a bit different. Okay. Outside lobbying is where the lobbyist uses the public to put pressure on the, on the elected official. So basically, if they want this particular law passed, like OVA, Ovie wants taxes reduced for transporters. Mm -hmm. Ovie, if Ovie comes to me and I'm the and I'm the lobbyist and I want to use outside lobbying, mm -hmm. maybe I will go and start a campaign right. in the public, right. so that the public will start shouting at the lawmakers in Alausa mm -hmm. and in and also uh, uh, you know in Abuja mm -hmm. to say, look. All these levies on transporters need to end or mm -hmm. need to be reduced, mm -hmm. and so that one is not a matter of your. It's, it, that's more like the stick. As, compo as as opposed to the to carrot. The carrot. Hmm. So um, I, I want us to I want us to stay on this subject a, a bit further, the inside lobbying bit. How is it, especially the financial angle now? Mm. How is it not bribery? Because I'm listening to it and I'm not seeing how or why this is not bribery. Right. So bribery is when you are a lawmaker. Mm -hmm. I'm someone. I'm an interest group or a lobbyist, mm -hmm. and I say. Take this money. I'm giving this money to you for yourself. Right. Go and use it to buy a car or mm -hmm. whatever you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. And in exchange for that, I want you to do this, this, and this. Mm. Now, that's bribery. But, you know, the way it is, the way it's set up, any any member of the public is allowed to contribute money for the, what they call it, for the campaign and for the electoral victory of a politician who they support and who they believe will do the right things for them. Mm. And, Campaign promises are acceptable. Um, sorry, campaign promises are acceptable to be given from by political appointee. Or, sorry, 
a, an elected official mm. to the public. Okay. So if the public says, deliver for us on this thing, pass this law, repeal this law, set up this regulation, mm. we will not only vote for you if you do that, mm -hmm. but we will raise money from your campaign, money that will not go to you directly. You will not collect the money, so you can't use it to go and buy a car. But that money will be used to, you know, fund your campaign. Like I said, buy posters and buy adverts on television and on hard facts with Sandra Ezek, <laughs> you know, so that and so the Americans sat down and looked at it because before these laws were put in place, mm -hmm. America was like Nigeria. Okay. People were bribing politicians, politicians were taking kickbacks, all these things were happening. Yeah. Now Americans looked at it and said, one way or the other, money will go from the public to politicians. Mm. It's going to happen. Mm. So how do we make sure it is done in the cleanest way possible that protects the public interest. And so they, they came up on this compromise. And it changes, it varies from country to country. Mm -hmm. But the compromise in America was simply this. Politicians can accept money if that money only goes to their campaign. Mm. And so that's why in America, the FEC, which is like their INEC, mm -hmm. what they are most interested in is where is the money from your campaign coming from and mm. where is it going to? Mm. You know, so as long as that money is not going into your private you know, pocket, pocket mm -hmm. it's only going for your campaign, mm -hmm. it's acceptable. And then there are also limits on how much a human being can give you. Hmm. Mm. Lagos, if you just joined the show, you're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. And I'm having an exploratory conversation today about lobbying and if Nigeria needs a formal lobbying industry. Because of a conversation that I had last week with Ovie. Ovie is in the transport business and Ovie talked to me about what transporters face in trying to get their work done. And uh, when he said said to me, you know, that uh, this was what was going on. I, I asked him on the show last week, um, can't transporters come together? Shouldn't transporters come together and say something? And uh, he laughed and I laughed. But I went home and I thought about it and I said to myself, yo, we need to, we need to see if this is possible here. We need to try and see if this is a, a, a possibility for Nigeria. And when we started the show, I gave you the example of how lobbying works in America. I told you about Uber and Tesla. Uh, Tesla makes electric cars. You know what Uber does. And one week ago, they announced that they were launching a new lobby. And the lobby will have one goal. And that one goal was to get the U.S. government to adopt policies that promote electric vehicles. You go favor Tesla, you go favor Uber. You also go favor electricity companies. So electricity companies jumped on that bandwagon and they're supporting that particular lobby. If Americans switch from petrol-powered cars to electric cars, Tesla will move market. Electricity companies will sell more power. And so they've launched that lobby. And so I started to wonder why the lobby industry hasn't caught on here in Nigeria. I started thinking about um, OVA, the transport, uh, transport businessman. And I started wondering why he doesn't have somebody pleading his case at Alausa and at Asurok. And I have a businessman on the show today who's also a policy expert. And he's trying to help me understand how this works in America, in the UK. He gave us a fun story about uh, where the name lobbying comes from. And don't worry, if you missed parts of the conversation, you can always listen again on our podcast, Hard Facts with Sandra Ezekwesili. We'll take a quick break, come back and continue the conversation. Don't forget, Lagos, you can call with your questions, with your thoughts about lobbying. This is 99.3 Nigeria Info. Don't go away. This is an infomercial.
Capri, Nigeria Info. I am Sandra Ezekwesili. And I wonder if you think the Nigerian private sector needs a formal uh, lobbying industry. Uh, this is because I had a conversation last week and this sent me down a rabbit hole and here we are talking about it. Now, of course, um, I, I need to know if you as a Lagosian think that, um, as a Nigerian really, do you think lobbying can work in Nigeria? Uh, do you have questions about lobbying? Do you, do you have questions about how lobbying works? Uh, if you're a business owner, what kind of business do you run? What kinds of policies do you think uh, a lobby could help push for you? I have a business executive and policy expert on the show with me today, Chief Andy Oboforibo, and he has been so helpful explaining all kinds of things, telling us what lobbying is, where it started, how it started, how it works in the U.S., for example, how lobbyists in other countries get to a senator or a congressman or a president. Uh, he's talked to us about the kinds of lobbying that there are. He says that there are there's the inside lobbying and there's the outside lobbying, and he's told us how inside lobbying works. And and um, that was what we we're talking about before the break. But before we go on, let me come to the phone lines because I'm sure that you are itching to jump on this conversation. So 0700-993-993-993-0700-993-993-993-993. Now, Chief, after we speak with Odede, I need to find out from you. Um, fundraising aside, fundraising for campaigns aside... If it's just about making persuasive arguments to the lawmaker or showing them that the regulation is in their best interests, why is a special lobbyist needed? Why can't anybody do it? But let's talk to Odedei first. Odedei is in Alabado. Odedei, welcome. Good morning, my dear sister. Welcome to the show. You. Bless you as well. Um, good morning to the analysts in the house. Hmm. Hi, uh, I think lobbying the way you have described it hmm. is going to be very difficult to work in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, where, you know, uh, he actually took time to explain to us mm. what uh, internal lobbying is, mm. what external lobbying is, mm. and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think both internal and external, mm. they are not likely to achieve the effect that we, we want them to achieve. For example, in the case of internal lobbying, mm. uh, promising uh, uh, legislators and uh, policy makers mm. that uh, they are going to raise funds for their campaign, all those things, mm -hmm. that, that, will, that will not cut any flag with them. Okay. What they request, what uh, we know our lawmakers, mm. what is paramount to them is the cash, the money that they will get from, you know, we have seen a lot of Things the way uh, before they will uh, pass the budget of any M uh, of MDAs mm. before they will uh, pass laws to favor some people they will request for money and this one has been going all, you know in the dailies in the media we have been hearing about it for years and uh, there is nothing we have been able to do about it. Mm. So if we start saying that we want to legalize lobbying now, it's, it's just going to be an avenue for m more bribery. There can't be lobbying in Nigeria without bri bribery. Mm. That's what I have come to the, the conclusion of. And even <laughs> when you now say you want to raise people to pressurize people, them to do the right thing, mm. is the, we have, we have had people now that uh, congregated at the gate of the National Assembly some time ago. They said that uh, they were going to remain there until some things were done. And eventually, the people, they sent uh, security agents to disperse them. So, we, it, it, Nigeria is not yet developed to that level where we where could see work. that the lobbying will, will, will work. Hmm. In Nigeria, our lawmakers, the only thing they understand is money and more money. <laughs> you know, if if they were going to listen to at all, mm. we have been all clamoring for the reduction of their emoluments for years now. Mm -hmm. Did they bother to do anything about it? Just recently, the Senate president came out to tell us that if we, are, if we don't like it, then we should fold them fold them out. Then the the money they are collecting, the allowances they are collecting, mm. they are not too much. They mm. are they they if they believe we if we are, as Nigerians believe that. They are not uh, offering enough service to, to what that is worth that money. Then we should vote them out. 
That is what he is know, saying. Mm. Knowing full way that when the election time come, these people will roll out the money because people are already in serious poverty and they will not mind to collect uh, uh, Ankara uh, uh, granite oil. Uh, rise from them so that they will vote for them. Hmm. So in, in case, the case of Nigeria is so complex <laughs> and I don't think uh, lobbying is going to, is is going to help us. Oh, Didi, Good. thank you so much for calling. Uh, Chief, do you agree? I, and I, I find it uh, interesting, the, the points he raised. I think he, he raised quite a few a few points. Uh, what do you think, Chief? Yes, I think he raised some very valid points. Hmm. Um, so let me start with the question. Like he said, one of the one of the first points that he made mm -hmm. was that... Um, Lobbying in Nigeria can, will not be able to happen without bribery. Mm -hmm. I find that a very interesting comment, and I think most people would probably agree with Odede. Mm -hmm. But if you go back to, say, the United States 100 years ago, mm -hmm. um, that's exactly what people were saying. They were saying that lobbying cannot happen without bribery. By the way, there's a movie that I think everybody should watch. I watched it uh, last month, and um, it made a lot of things that happen in Nigeria uh, make sense. So um, if you have the time, please uh, try and see Gangs of New York. Was it Gangs oh, yes, of New York? that's a great movie, yes. Yes, Gangs of New York. Leonardo DiCaprio is yeah, in and, it. Yeah, um, and I think um, Daniel Day-Lewis. Yes. yes. A great movie. Um, that m when you watch that movie, you see that... You'll understand Nigeria. You'll understand Nigeria. Um, seriously, like, Google it and uh, try and see it. If you have Netflix, it's on Netflix. Um, I'm not supporting bootlegging movies. But yes, I, I remembered that because you said 100 years ago... Uh, That's exactly what they were saying about in lobbying in the US. Mm. Like, everybody said, no, this politician is already collecting bribes. Mm. So if you now create a formal lobbying industry, um, they will still collect the bribes. Mm. Uh, that they will just turn it into another avenue for collecting bribes. Doesn't work. But actually, what you see is this, and I'm not saying I'm not ruling that out. Mm -hmm. But here's the way I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it from the point of view of Ouvier, your transporter. Yeah. The politicians right now are allegedly collecting bribes, right? Mm -hmm. They're collecting bribes, and nothing is passing their desk unless they are bribed, mm -hmm. right? Allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, under that situation, Ovier is losing out anyway. Ovier is losing out. Mm -hmm. um, every private, every member of the private sector is losing out because mm -hmm. they are not the ones giving the bribes to the lawmakers. Right. Right. Now the lawmakers are also in a situation whereby they are collecting these bribes and they are putting themselves in the target, the crosshairs of their political enemies right. who can one day put the EFCC on them. Mm. But now, when you create lobbying and you formalize it and legalize it, mm -hmm. you create an avenue for politicians and politi for politicians to receive legal money. Mm. Okay. Directed to legal purposes. <laughs> okay. And be see, um, you know, um, let me quote one of my favorite people on the, in, in history, um, <laughs> Lorenzo de' Medici, who mm -hmm. ruled Italy, for, part of Italy for a long time. Mm -hmm. He said, you can't govern with Hail Mary and the Lord's Prayer. Um, governance is not the the nicest thing in the world. Mm. So these politicians are going to politicians all over the world. They're, they're interested in two things: mm. money, money, and so winning their ele next election, mm -hmm. and money for winning their next election. <laughs> that's 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 all they care about. That's all they care all over about. The world. That's all they care about. Look, at the end of the day, um, the president came and did public fundraising for his campaign. Mm. Um, the previous president also came and did public fundraising for his campaign. Mm -hmm. I know of governors who do fundraising for their campaigns. Mm -hmm. So even if uh, let us, we all know that the money for re for elections has predominantly not come from fundraising. Mm -hmm. It has come from... Private pockets. Corruption. Mm -hmm. um, that is where it has come from. Mm -hmm. But things are changing mm -hmm. because um, oil is drying up. Mm. Um, government money is not coming out as freely as it was before. Mm -hmm. And yes, of course, that um, the National Assembly will not vote to reduce their salary. Mm -hmm. They will never vote. I mean, would your caller agree to a reduction in salary in his office? Nobody ever, if nobody ever votes and agrees to a reduction in their salary. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean that they will not vote for other things that are in the public interest if enough pressure is put on them mm -hmm. or enough incentives are given to them. Now, the question is, here in Nigeria, mm -hmm. will the incentives and the pressure be the same as they are in America? So we talked about campaign fundraising because we're talking specifically about the American context. System. But here in Nigeria, it we may need to have different incentives. So, for example, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, during the NSAS protest, at the end of the NSAS protest, mm -hmm. you had some lawmakers here in Lagos who came out to say 
that um, social media is bad and social media should be regulated. Mm. And then a couple of days later, they came out and said, I was misquoted. That's not what I said. I can never say a thing like that. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself a question. What happened in between Friday and Tuesday? Like, what made this honorable change mount? Obviously, there is something that can put pressure on a Nigerian politician. Something that comes from the public. So imagine if that is channeled towards lobbying politicians to do what people want. Hmm. Let's take another call. Uh, I love having Chief Obopoema on the show. He's so inspirational. Zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. Do you think uh, the Nigerian private sector needs a formal lobbying industry? If you've been listening to the conversation since we started today and you've heard all the things the kind Chief has said about lobbying, there's still a lot of ground to cover. So, Chief, I'm going to drag you back in the, into the studio on Wednesday um, <laughs> so that we'll have this conversation again between sure. five and six because we've not even put a dent in it. Um, I mean, I still want to find out why anybody cannot just be a lobbyist, right? But let's talk to Frank, you know, Joe first. Frank, welcome. Yeah, good evening, ma. Good evening, sir. How are you? Very well. Turn your radio off. How are you? I'm fine. Mm. You see, I love the conversation. And I want to come to, you said, if I may, if I may, Mr. Please, you correct me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said um, one... Uh, Lord was coming inside Lagos with Yam, and the, all those boys was determined to collect money. Mm -hmm. uh, then you, and where you will call off Deji, how all these things can be stopped, and he started laughing and you laughed. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, did you know why he is laughing? Why? That is a problem that he don't know how to do it. Mm. You understand? Okay. That's right. Now, let me tell you, if you give me one minute now, we'll go around this Nigeria now. Mm hmm it's not a matter, it's not a state matter. If you are going to Onita now, after Onita now, you get them to beggar. After beggar now, at Instagram to get you see them. At Bandela, therefore, they are there. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Hmm? Coming down to Benin, you will see them. At Abo, you will see them. At Delta, you will see them. If after bridge, after administration point, you will see them again. Going to Ziago, you will see them. Oji River, they are there. Night mile. Do as if you are going to Obolafo. They are women, they are to Obolafo, they are to the branch. As you eat over here, they are there. You go to local, they are there. Go to Abu Dhabi, they are there. As if you are going to a park like a road. After New York, you will see them. It's not Bo Johnson, they are there. After, um, after Spray and Doe, you see them. Going to Ecom, you will see them at Yahe, Mboku, they are there. Oh God, that, that, that is their business there. Are you hearing me now? Okay. You know, as if you are going to Abangwa now. You see them as usual. You see that on my, uh, at Ingo Pala. Okay. So, are you so, so, so they're everywhere? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. so everywhere. Mm. Go from uh, 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 Ebado now to Eloringo to Mena. They are full. Mm. So how will you control it? So that was why he was laughing. Mm. How do you control it? That's the conversation we're having on the show. We're trying to figure out how exactly you can control it. Now, the next 15 minutes of this show is brought to you courtesy Unicaf. Unicaf is an online uh, education platform. They are a global platform uh, educational organization based in Europe offering scholarships to Africans to pursue um, their academic studies with their partners online. And by the way, they told me that a lot of you have been calling, uh, trying to inquire, trying to um, see how you can get um, um, scholarships to study abroad online. And that makes me very happy. Now, they've said that um, for everybody who comes through hard facts, they're going to give that person a 75% discount. So when you do call them, uh, you know, on the numbers that they've given to uh, you on air today, uh, tell them that you've called from hard facts so that you are entitled to that um, 75% discount. But yes, the next 15 minutes of Hard Facts is brought to you courtesy Unicaf. So we're going to take a quick break, play their message for you, and then come back and talk some more about lobbying. I feel like uh, Asu and uh, students probably wish <laughs> that there's somebody who's lobbying on their behalf. Yes? Am I right, Chifanju? Oh, definitely. <laughs> a Unicaf scholarship can
is if uh, lobbying can work in Nigeria. Now, when you come on Wednesday, we're going to um, talk in more detail about how lobbying works in other parts of the world. But do you think it can work here? Do you think elected officials care enough about public opinion to be influenced by outside lobbying? You did give example about uh, Desmond Elliott, the representative for Suruleri, uh, right here in Lagos, at the Lagos State House of Assembly, who said one thing about social media and two days later said some, said uh, he was misquoted or he was emotional when he made the first statements. And uh, you think that that's a result of very strong public opinion. But that's one example. How, I mean, there, there, there were six other lawmakers who said things as well, and they've not recanted. Yes. So what, here's the thing. Here's the thing with politics. And this is what oftentimes we get wrong in politics and policy making. One out of six, it, it worked on one person out of six. Right. And so we look at that and we say, well, it's a failure. It only worked on one out of six. Hmm. But the people who succeed in politics said, will say, it worked in one out of six. Yay. That means if I put more effort into it, hmm. it could work on two out of six. Well, it kind of worked on two because Mojisola was recalled. Well, there you go. Two, two. When they started it, not so, so it's worked in two out of six, which means one out of three. And then you put some more effort and it works in two out of three. And that's how, that's how any sustainable, effective political system is built incrementally. Let me give you another example, a mm. practical example. Mm. In two, by the end of the 2003 elections, um, the AD, the Alliance for Democracy, had one governorship here in Lagos, Bolab and Tinubu. One. Now, if, you, if we went by the normal Nigerian way of approaching things, eh, there's no... It's over. Fast forward to 2015, and the, um, the, the, the successor party of the AD, the APC, has a presidency and the majority of states. You mean government. ACN, not AD? No, I mean AD. Oh, okay. Well, ACN didn't come about until... AD became AC. In uh, 2003, it was AD. Okay. Then in 2007, it became AC, Action Congress. Uh, then in 2011, it became ACN, Action Congress of Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. Then after that, it you know it changes every election new name, <laughs> and then APC in 2015, which now we find a one that works. So yeah, we'll stay with APC. <laughs> uh -huh. So it's it like that. So you see, they went from one party, one state, mm -hmm. to controlling the country mm -hmm. because they saw that that one victory, if you replicate it in other places, it will work. Mm. So if it only worked on Desmond Elliott today, but keep at it. It could work on more lawmakers tomorrow. Lobbying didn't w start working overnight in other countries. You have to push and push and push. And then you also have to realize that maybe, like I said before, the tools that work on uh, will lobbyists use in America that work on American politicians mm. won't work on Nigerian politicians. You have to think of other tools that can be used. Mm. And we now see that a lot of times the stick works more than the carrot. Mm. I'll give you another example of something that you said something here. We talked about something here on hard facts and suddenly we're seeing the House of Reps working on it. Mm. We talked here in, yes. when we're talking about police reform. That's right. We talked about reforming the Police Service Commission right. and expanding it from only in Abuja into all the states. That's right. And now the Speaker of the House of Reps, Femi Bajabia Mila, is presenting a bill, police reform bill, that does exactly that. That's right. Sometimes, eh, let's also remember that eh, these politicians, nobody is 100% good or 100% bad. Mm. These politicians, there are particular things that they don't want to change, like their salaries, <laughs> right? Okay. Then most of the other things that they are doing wrong, they are doing wrong simply because they don't know any better. You can't assume that just because somebody is elected and honorable that they have more sense than you or more knowledge than you. Mm. A lot of the time, they simply don't know what you know. And so sometimes, it is, an, it, is, it is simply a matter of providing the information and providing enough public pressure that they themselves will say, ah, if we don't do this thing, people will shout, and then they will, they will now do it. We've seen more than one example. Social media bill that's being brought back now. You remember they tried it before, mm. and there was enough shouting, and they backed down. Mm. Uh, some even argue that Not Too Young to Run was as a result it of was. lobbying. Exactly. Mm. Not Too Young to Run came about because a group, an interest group came together mm. and pushed it. Mm -hmm. You know? So let's not have this attitude. Definitely, it will work easier on some issues than others. What industries do you, wh where do you see it working? What industries or sectors do you think are in the best position to get lobbying to work? Um, The ones that generate the most revenue. Mm. So 
even places, people like transporters like Ovier, mm-hmm. the problem that transporters have is that they are divided, they are scattered across all the country. Okay. And that's where lobbying comes in best. Because what a lobby group does is, even if you are in Umwahia and your other member is in Kafanchan, mm. the lobby group sitting in Abuja can coordinate with all of you, bring all of you together. Oh, everybody bring your dues. Everybody come and sign this petition. Isn't everybody that what NURTW is supposed to do? NURTW is supposed to do that, but what you often have, so you, with, I, I don't want to speak about NURTW specifically mm-hmm. or any union specifically. Mm-hmm. Some unions work in the interest of their members against government, mm-hmm. but some unions work in the interest of government against their members. Mm. So you, as a union member, you have to look at it and assess. Use your tongue to count your teeth. Mm. Is my union working for me? And then even if the union wants to work for you, mm. sometimes the union does not go up, know how to go about fighting for you. Right. The union needs professional groups whose only job is to go and fight. Speaking of professional groups whose only job is to go and fight, Unicaf, our sponsor on the last quarter of Hard Facts, they know how to provide um, online education for people who would like to study abroad. Um, So if you are looking to get a degree, any kind of degree really, uh, BSc, Master's, PhD, from universities in London, from universities in California, um, they can actually help make that happen for you. And there are advantages of studying through UNICAF, right? So you've got um, affordability. Don't forget I mentioned that um, if you give them a call on 07000 111 000 um, and you tell them, hey, I'm calling you from Hard Facts with Sandra Ezekwesli, they'll give you a 75% uh, discount. So affordability right right there. Uh, there's also flexibility because it's online. It's an online education uh, an online education scheme. So that means that uh, you can do it at your own pace. You can do it uh, in the middle of the night when you've gotten home after Lagos traffic. There's also a- a- accessibility. There's also credibility. I mean, look what's happening with, uh, with ASU Strike. Look what's happening. What we talked about last week when we're talking about um, what you had to do to defend your master's or your BSc or your PhD, where some people had to buy coolers of rice and garden egg and things like that. You're not worrying about all of that if you are doing an online um, uh, education program through UNICAF. So uh, do give them a call, 07000 When you receive your certificate at the end of your um, at, at the end of your course, it's the same degree that is being offered to on-campus students. So even if you never get into, uh, into uh, you never stay on campus for your classes, you do all your courses online, it's still the same degree um, that you are getting with those who are in actual classrooms uh, right there in the UK. And you can attend your graduation ceremony at the university abroad. So the certificates um, do not even indicate that you studied online. The certificate just says University of Suffolk or it says University of California or it says uh, Liverpool John Moores University. It just, that's all it says. And if you are a working woman or a working man and uh, your money never completes to really jackpot like that this is a great way to get it done uh, and uh, multitask at the same time so um, again thank you to UNICAF for bringing the last 15 minutes of this show to you and uh, we're hoping that um, uh, they continue to do this so that more and more Nigerians can uh, study abroad but back to you Chief of Um so you're saying that lobbying in the way that it works you know in other countries could work here Yes, I am. You know, the thing is this we like to believe Nigeria is different and special, but Nigeria isn't different and special. Nigeria is simply appears differently and special because a lot of things that other people have done and tried, we've not done and tried enough. That's just a simple truth. Hmm. Um, at the end of the day, politicians are there because um, they want to stay there, like they want to stay in office, whatever it is. And if they feel like there is something that can help them stay in office or something that can kick them out of office, they will do their best to keep the people satisfied. Mm. So what a lobbyist does is finds those levers, those carrots and sticks that makes a politician do what the public wants a politician to do. So I have somebody on WhatsApp, Hamzat from Lagos Island, who says that lobbying is actually already going on in Nigeria. Yes. He says Dangote um, is, is lobbying the government. Yes. And that's why policies um, seem to be tilted towards favoring him. What do you say, Chief? That's exactly right. And you know, this was a point I was hoping we'll get to. Mm. The thing is this. 
the people, the biggest corporations, the richest um, corporations, they're already lobbying government. Mm. The p- issue is that they have access. So when you have a situation like this, so what, what happens here is that it's the little guy who doesn't have a lot of access. Mm. So what the lobbying industry does, or what we do when we create a lobbying industry out of nothing, right. is it gives opportunity for the little guy who would never be able to enter, walk through the doors Dangote can walk through mm-hmm. to suddenly have access. Let me give you one example. For, you know, because So when I was a university student, right. I was a university student in, in, in the US, in the um, Arizona State University. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, hot-headed aluta aluta continua <laughs> and um, w- every day we're looking for a new cause to fight yeah. and one of the causes we're fighting was we're fighting against private prisons that is prisons owned or run by private companies mm. r- for profit okay. you know because there are lots of human rights issues there which i won't get into mm-hmm. so we were fighting we we're against it and we we're trying to get um you know the federal government to pass regulations about it mm-hmm. and so we we're like well we need to talk to our senator and uh, the senator at the time was late john mccain and um so we managed to go and we got time to go see senator mccain in mm-hmm, washington mm-hmm. dc students we were like you know undergrad students and we went down to see senator mccain they scheduled us we went there we had our 20 minutes sit down with him he was apologizing to us because he was one minute late um you know so but we sat down with him and we talked and he said yeah we will do we found out that the private prison you know um you know industry mm-hmm. was also lobbying him lobbying other people pumping a lot of money and lobbying and all of that. So y'all just had your words and he, you know, the other people had money. But then guess what happened? The Gamaliel Foundation stepped in. Now the Gamaliel Foundation is an organization that Barack Obama worked for Mm -hmm. before then. Mm -hmm. He had already left. Mm -hmm. They are just a community organizing group. Mm -hmm. And they came in and they provided funding for us Mm -hmm. to hire our own lobbyists. So we hired our own lobbyists with money from the Gamaliel Foundation Mm -hmm. to help us lobby against private prisons. Pause that story. We're going to come back to it on Wednesday. Lagos, thank you so much for being a part of this show. And thank you again to Unicap for bringing this uh, part of Hard Facts to you. Again, like I said, they are a global education organization based in Europe. And they're trying to make sure a lot of people can get education online. Our guest has been Chief Andy Oboforibo. He's a business executive. He's also a policy expert. And he's quite knowledgeable about these things. Chief Thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure.